Hello, hello. Happy Monday. Here we are starting a fresh week. God's got so much good stuff in store for us this week. I just know it. I just know it. Okay, as you pop on, please type in your name, where you're from. Oh good, we got a thumbs up on YouTube, so we're good to go on there. Uh, Facebook, let me know as you pop on um, that you can hear me and that we're good on Facebook as well. Your name, where you're watching from. Yay, Taven's here. Cool. Okay. Um, while people are hopping on, I just want to introduce myself, let everybody know who I am. Um, I'm Christine James. I have been a follower of Christ for about 26 years now, and I've been doing um, ministry for about 20 years-ish. Uh, pretty crazy. Um, I have been married for almost 14 years. I am a mom of four boys which we actually had in the matter of five years. <laughs> so now they're ranging from ages seven to 12. So, you know, most of my sanity has returned at this point. Um, let's see, I, okay, so I, my parents divorced when I was young. I have divorced parents. I have, I'm the oldest of seven siblings and that does not count three step siblings. I've been a barista, uh, a college dropout, a youth intern, uh, and a personal trainer, an actress. I've, I've, I've got to say, I have rocked this whole home management thing while handling a thyroid disease. So in all of these things, in all of these things, I have followed hard after Jesus. And I have found him and his truth in each season of my life, every season. And I know, I know that God has called me to equip others to do the same thing. So the truth is you either sweat in training or bleed in battle, right? So the battles of life are inevitable. <laughs> battles are going to happen. It's, it's inevitable. Uh, so I am all about training training in the truth, guiding women through scriptures, um, through the sweat of training in God's word in order to avoid the bleeding in life, to really live out that victory. So I've established Train in Truth. It's a ministry to just guide women through the sweat. It's about training, the, training in the scriptures to live in the victory that God has already given us to moment in all the circumstances that come our way. That is kind of me in a nutshell. That's my heart. It's kind of a little bit about my background, um, what I've done and all of those things. But I wanna pray and then we will dig right in. Let's see. Um, it looks like Facebook is having a little bit of a hard time connecting. But I think, I think we're good to go there now, right? It's good to see you, Jessica. Um, and all right, it looks like, I think we're good to go on Facebook too. We've got two thumbs up, all right. Lord Jesus, we love you, we thank you for this time. And I just pray, Father God, that you would use my words, that you would be, that you would just ooze uh, through and just encourage everyone in this next hour. Um, we, just, we just trust you and we ask for clarity. We just ask for clarity, we know that you are a God that um, is clear in your intentions, in your purposes. And so um, I just pray that you would equip each of us to step into that. It's in your name we pray, amen. Okay, so I wanna start by telling you, telling you a, a little something that happened about a year ago or so. I was, um, it was Wednesday evening and on Wednesdays, my husband would go lead worship at church. He was the worship leader at our church, and we had Wednesday night Bible studies. And because they were during the week and kind of later, and I um, wanted him to be able to kind of like focus on his ministry and not help me with the kids, <laughs> I kept the kids at home on Wednesday nights. 
and we would do cereal night. Every Wednesday night, I would feed my kids cereal for dinner. The other Wednesday, I thought, you know, I'm gonna be a really good mom and I'm gonna give my kids something more nutritious than cereal for dinner. Uh, I'm going to give them a smoothie. And so I announced that I was going to make the smoothie for them, right? And they got all excited and I went in and I got the frozen fruit out and I put the protein in and I put the spinach in and I made this great healthy, this, this great healthy smoothie for them, right? Bring it in say, okay, you can have your cereal after you drink your smoothie. So they start drinking it and they don't like it. They don't like it at all. You know, there's like my, my second boy and my fourth were very vocal about their feelings. <laughs> so they made it clear that it was gross and they didn't, they didn't like it at all. And then, you know, my, my first could see that I was getting slightly offended that they didn't, that they didn't like the smoothie that I had just made. And he's like, you guys, it's fine. It's fine. Just drink it. You're, you're fine. You know, <laughs> he's trying to um, guard his mama a little bit and, and cover things. And, and then, you know, my third is sweet. Um, um, I don't, I would prefer something else. Next time, can you make the smoothie different? <laughs> you know, so, and I'm like, no, you guys have got to drink this. I I put all this effort into it. Cause I did not want to make a smoothie that night, you guys. I was tired. I wanted to just let them have their cereal, but I wanted more to be a good mom <laughs> and have healthy kids. So I did this, I got my butt up and I made these smooth stinking smoothies and here they are throwing it back in my face. Okay, not literally, but. And I got really upset, like my, but my oldest is like gagging his down and <laughs> like, you're gonna drink your smoothies. And then of course, like there's this inner battle, right? I'm like, oh, maybe I should just let it go. It's just a smoothie. But then there's this, no, I made all this, which all this, it's this like internal battle, just like raging, right? And so there, then I start bargaining with one and then the other, but you said this and it was just pure chaos. And so I just, kind of, I blew my lid a little bit, you know? I just kind of flew off the handle and it was, so I'm like, you know what? Stop, everybody quiet, go sit down, I just need a minute. So I remember like going over the stairs and I'm like sitting in this dark stairwell and like, Lord, what is happening to me? I'm a horrible mom, why can't, why am I feeling things so deeply at it? And then I, all of a sudden the thought occurs to me, I'm like, hmm wonder what day of my cycle I'm on. Sure enough, I um, was going to start my period the next day. <laughs> like, so I was, I was a little hormonal. And of, so, you know, I went in, apologized, we figured it out, it was all fine. But I tell this story because our bodies affect our choices, right? What is going on in our bodies affect our whole um, experience. My point is that we are a let's see, body, soul, and spirit. Forgive my sloppiness here. So we are a tribeam. There's three parts of us. Can you even see my writing? I don't know if you can even see my writing, but we have a body, a soul, and a spirit, and they are all so intimately connected. They're all so intimately connected. What is happening in our body um, affects the way we think. Um, okay, so our body is our physical being. Our soul is our mind, our thoughts, our emotions, what we're feeling, and our will, our, the choices that we make. And so um, our soul is our personality, you know, it's our, the thoughts that we have create the emotions that we experience. Every emotion can be traced back to a thought. And then the culmination of our thoughts and our emotions create our choices. And then our choices, what we will, 
create our reality. And the body is such a huge part in that, right? It plays a part. We can't deny it. <laughs> our hormones impact our thought process and our emotions. Uh, we were created with three parts. So we have, um, sorry, guys, are you, can you hear me still? Workbook keeps, can you guys all hear me? Are you all here? Let me know if I need to do something. So we have these three parts and our spirit is dead until the Holy Spirit comes to live in us. It comes alive when we accept Jesus Christ as our savior. The Holy Spirit comes inside of us, the, the spirit of power, love and discipline and sound mind, the power that raised Christ from the dead. This Holy Spirit lives inside of us. And so we have these three parts to our being. We need to consider all three parts as we pursue living powerfully without confusion, in confidence, and with clarity. Okay? So the thing is, when it comes to our being, we want to make sure that the Spirit, this Holy Spirit, is leading us. If we want to live in clarity, because if we let our soul lead us, <laughs> if we let our thoughts, our uncontrolled thoughts just take us wherever we want to go. If we let our emotions, if we make all of our choices just um, due to whatever emotions we're feeling in the moment, uh, we can end up in some trouble, right? <laughs> if we let our body lead us, if we let all of the impulses we have just go and we just give in to our impulses, man, there can be some consequences, right? But, and we can get confused with that, but when we let the Holy Spirit, we let God lead us, there is clarity there. There is clarity because our God is not confused. He's not confused. He's completely clear, all powerful God. Okay. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 through 24, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who called you is faithful and he will do it. He will sanctify you, spirit, body, and soul. I love that. Okay. So that is a little bit about the, the triune, the way we are created. And I want to talk to you about how, how do we get the, the spirit to be our leader? How do we be led by the spirit? Um, I want to give you six practical things for our soul and our body in order for us to equip it to live the way Christ has called us to. I know all of the things that I'm going to list out. All the things that I, I've, I'm sure you have heard it before, you know it, um, you possibly even live by it, but I wanna clarify a little bit of them and bring it under the umbrella of the word of God and God's intentions, okay? So, first thing is schedule. I know on social media about scheduling your days, right? Because when the kids are home, it helps to have a schedule, but okay. I know for me, <laughs> for me, just to have some sort of structure to go to eliminates some anxiety. Like in the moment where I'm like, ah, I gotta decide what to do next, to have something written down that I can go to and just say, okay, this is the direction we're heading. Taking a few moments to create a schedule can be super helpful and it doesn't have to look like anybody else's but something that is going to be practical in your day i don't know have you ever heard that term the dullest pencil is sharper than the brightest mind the thing is our brain can only hold so much and we'll we'll keep thinking the same things over and over and we'll be trying to remember right we'll be trying to remember things and if it, it stresses our brain out. But if we can write them down, 
it'll help the brain to relax a little bit. We can relax a bit when we've already written it down. We can start focusing on God's a planner. God's a planner. We have, he has planned. He says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord plans to prosper you, not to harm you. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it, it states clearly that God as well. Okay, our next thing is routine. I want to say that a routine to our our mind, our emotions, and our body to have some sort of routine in place. Um, God, he works. He works with routines, right? Like, see, there's summer, spring, winter, fall, every year. And I'll tell you, habits, habits really help the brain to automate things. And it's to have routines and habits established. So, you know, in patients that have amnesia, they might forget like who they are, people um, and people around them, but they remember how to walk. They remember how to brush their teeth. <laughs> they remember simple things that have been habits and routine in their life. And it's just automated back in the brain. So when we can automate things that help us to move in the direction we wanna go, it will help, it will help our brain um, and our body and our emotions and our thoughts. So creating that routine is super helpful. And I have to tell you that with this, it's been really great for the kids. I, like I posted the schedule up just to have it as a tool um, so that the kids know kind of what to expect, so that I can go to it to reference it, um, typed it up, put it up on the fridge. And the other day, one of my boys was like, oh, it's chore time. Mom, what chore do you want me to do? Okay. <laughs> it's chore time. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to have you do this. <laughs> like, like the, the routine was so helpful for them. And um, it helps me to not have to like be like, hey, everybody, it's chore time. Let's get chores going. So just, just a tip there. Okay. Number three, get outside, get outside. Okay, Romans 12, or Romans 1, 19 through 22 in the New Living Translation says, they know the truth about God because he has made it obvious for them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and the sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. And as a result, their minds became dark and confused. Claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. When we step outside, and we see what God has created. It will put our focus in the right direction. When we stay inside and we start focusing on our, our surroundings, our, um, the news, when we start focusing on the, these tangible things that are just like created that are in our home, we can get, we can forget and we can get confused. We can forget about the creator who is all powerful, who has a plan, and whose intentions for you are good. But when we step outside, that becomes much more clear. And I've got to say, science backs it up. We are actually, um, we run on frequencies. We're like electrical beings. <laughs> and so when we're inside, gosh, how many frequencies are coming at us? You know, we've got the Wi-Fi, we've got the microwave, we've got the all, the TV, all these things. But when we step outside, the frequency of the air and the trees and the sun, it kind of like recalibrates. It recalibrates us and we get in a better mindset. I'll tell you, um, just the other day, I was getting my boys out to uh, go on a walk and I uh, <laughs> like had to pull my youngest away from the screen to get him to come outside right and he's you know he's very passionate about things very passionate about things and he feels things deeply and so he didn't he didn't want to come out 
he didn't want to. And so it was a bit of a process to get him to come outside and go on this walk. But we finally got out and we're, we're going on our way and I'm walking along and he comes up with his scooter beside me and he goes, Mom, thanks for getting me outside. Thanks for taking us on a walk. Sometimes it's just really hard for me. His attitude had completely changed, completely changed. And he was delighted and happy and just, it was so good. All right. So that was a win that I thought I'd share with you. Um, getting outside is so helpful. Okay. Next thing is nutrition. Yep. I'm going there. Nutrition plays an effect on how we see things. Okay, so the gut is actually, it has a direct line to our brain. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like what our gut is doing affects the way we think. Pretty crazy, right? Uh, so if our brains, if, if the nutrition, if what we're giving it um, is stressing out our body, our brains are already, we are already, our body is already under a lot of emotional stress. So let's diminish the nutritional stress. Let's put things that in it that are going to be beneficial to it um, and aid it <laughs> that are going to be beneficial, it says in uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 23. Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. So if we're eating a ton of processed foods, it's going to affect our soul. Our brains are going to feel it. Our thoughts are going to feel it. Our emotions are going to feel it. Now we can find comfort in food that is actually good for us. It's possible. I mean, for me, it's like potatoes and homemade chocolates that I made with coconut oil. You know, <laughs> you can do it. So I just want to encourage you to just be aware. Aware of what you're putting in your body in order to equip it so that you can live in clarity. All right. Okay. Next one. Sleep. You know this, right? But it says, it says, gosh, scripture says that God will give us rest and sleep. He will sustain us. When we are sustained by God, we get rest and sleep. Um, it says Psalm 3, 5, I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. Okay. Our body needs sleep. It's when we sleep that our body actually rids itself of toxins. So here's 11 side effects of lack of sleep. Weak, it weakens immune systems. Uh, it weakens respiratory system. Uh, you're more susceptible to diabetes, depression, weight gain, fatigue. Uh, it affects our skin. Uh, lack of coordination, memory loss, hallucinations and food cravings. All things caused by, well, that are, can be symptoms of a lack of sleep, of not getting enough sleep. You know they made a game show out of this? They like had people stay awake for 24 hours and count money and then they asked them questions and, and then they like made it entertainment. <laughs> what? Okay. Last and most important thing, practical think tool um, to help with this, the body and the soul to get in line with the spirit. You guys, anybody want to guess? Want to guess what it is? It's to get in the word. It's to get in the truth of what God has said. It's, it's all about the scriptures, right? Gosh, he gives us manna to sustain us every day. All right, so the truth, it clarifies. Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Second Timothy, all scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training, and righteousness so the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Hebrews 4, 12. So the word of God is alive and active sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts of the attitudes and heart. I don't know, but have you ever, no, I know you have got to have been in this place. I'm not the only one where 
you don't know if it's when you're thinking in something you don't know if it's your soul if it's your flesh or if it's the holy spirit like what uh, trying to discern what to do next or if 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 you're hearing from god how do you know you get the word it is sharper than any two-edged sword and it cuts between soul and spirit so the word will show us what is spirit and what is not. I love that. So now I know there are a lot of reasons why, why we don't get in the word. There's a lot of reasons that come against us, things that we, lies we might believe or um, resistance that we have to actually getting in scripture. But I want, so I want to address some of those. Uh, one, one thing we might believe is that, um, some people might not get into the word because they don't understand it, right? It can be kind of, um, intense and unclear, uh, but you guys, do you want to know how many different versions of the Bible there is? <laughs> so many different translations that you can easily find one that is something that you can digest, something that you can understand. And listen, it says in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 9, it says, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk to them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them to your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. It says that children can understand them. If we could focus on the scriptures that we do understand, we're going to gain some clarity. So you can do it. There are scriptures that you can understand. Okay. Another thing that kind of hinders us to getting in the word regularly is that we just go to it when we need it, right? There might be something going on in our life or we're feeling a little discouraged. And so we reach for the book. We reach for the Bible when, um, when we need it. But I'm telling you, if you do what Deuteronomy 6 says, if you get creative and you start really diving in and and pasting scripture all over the house and in your mind and in your heart, um, then you're going to have it and you're not going to need to go to the book, right? You're going to know it. You're going to know it and it'll be right there. And the thing is, when you make it a ritual, when you make it a routine to get into the word, it, you might not feel like you need it, but the word will read you as you read it. So it's going to speak to you even if you don't think you need it. It can see you and, and the Holy Spirit can make scriptures come alive and speak to you even though you didn't know that you needed it. It's really phenomenal how it works. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are times where I have been obedient to just get in the Word and read it because I want to be with Jesus and nothing like fantastical happens. but training my brain to know this truth and to spend time with my God, then that information is there when I do need it. Okay, another thing we might be thinking is, well, it's not my job to really know the scriptures because I'm not um, a minister, I'm not a teacher. I'll just like listen to what other people say about it and absorb that. <laughs> oh, you guys, but the thing is we need firsthand experience. We need to know what scripture wants to say to us specifically through the lens of our life. It might not be your job like, to like study and teach the scripture. That might not be your gifting. Teaching it might not be your gifting. But when you are adopted into a family, you're going to need to know how the family is run. You're going to need to know what is expected of you and how to participate in the family life, right? And that's what scriptures do. 
They tell you about your family. They tell you about what's expected of you and how everything runs. It, it, you need to know this stuff. And if you are a disciple, if you are a follower of Christ, you have been commissioned to go make disciples of the world. And even if that part of the world that you're to make disciples of is in your living room or at your job, by just living out and speaking truth and knowing the word. You got to know it, you guys. Um, okay, maybe you're not super intelligent and you don't want to, or maybe you're not a reader. Maybe reading isn't your thing and you have a hard time focusing on reading. But you know what? They, they have apps now where you can just hit play and it'll read it to you. It'll totally read it to you. So you can listen. You can listen. Okay, it says in James 1, here I have the verse back here, James 1, it says, do not just listen to the word, but do it. So this word do in the Greek is like obey, but it also, one of the words listed in the definition is poet, is creative, is being creative about getting the word in you. So even if you're not a reader, you can still get the word inside of you. You can still actually do it. You can, you can listen to worship songs with scripture in it, right? You can listen to teachings. You can, you can hit play on the Bible app and have it read to you. Like what, what an age that we live in, right? Okay, it says Psalm 19.7, the law of the Lord is perfect. It's flawless and it restores and refreshes the soul. The statues of the Lord are reliable and trustworthy and they make wise the simple. They make you wise. I love that. Um, and, and maybe, maybe it's that you don't have the right place, right? There's not like a right time because you want to have like an hour chunk of time to sit down and get your candle on and have the worship play, music playing so that you can actually get in the word and talk to God. We have this idealistic picture of what this time with, with Jesus is going to look like, right? Well, that is wonderful, man. I get up early so that I can do this, like have that quiet time with God. But, but you know what? I want to tell you that some of my some of the, the most intimate experiences I've had with God has been while I'm doing something else. While I'm just talking to him and fellowshipping with him, while I'm making my husband's lunch or doing the laundry or driving. Um, it doesn't have to be an ideal time um, to get in the word, to fellowship with him. There, there, there is, don't chase perfection is all I'm saying. Uh, it's never going to be perfect. Okay, and then one, one more thing I want to approach about why, um, why sometimes maybe we don't get in the word. And for me, this is this was my problem, really. Um, I never really had an issue when it came to creating that habit and getting in the word. I, I am disciplined in nature and um, madly in love with the Lord and love scriptures. And so for me, it was something different. There were times where I felt like the word wasn't changing my circumstances and my prayers were not, um, it's almost like, what's the point, right? Um, So for me, it was, it was that there were times where I misunderstood scripture, where I built core values. Um, I built core values on scriptures without fully understanding the context and God's heart behind them. Um, versus, I know this is like, this is dangerous. <laughs> that, that was a dangerous thing. Um, but verses like created to be his help me, um, submit to your husband, it's unto the Lord. Like these things became these principles in my life where I would like, I would ignore something that God said because my husband 
didn't say it. Um, if my husband didn't specifically say, go to the doctor, I wouldn't do it. Or if, uh, if Dave was indifferent to something that I wanted to do, I didn't do it because I was just created to support him, you know, not to be my own person. I know this is crazy. Like, I just, um, I like, like look back at that and I'm like, what? But I, like, I need to give myself a little grace here. My, my body wasn't totally functioning right. And, um, and I just believed some lies. But when we see that we're doing something that's not working, then we need to change, right? Something needs to change. Like I, my circumstances weren't changing. There weren't breakthroughs that I knew God wanted to happen for me weren't happening. And so, you know what I did? I sought God more. Because we can get confused even when we are trying to <laughs> make God um, the head of our, of our being. We can still get confused sometimes. We live in this broken world. We live in a broken world and we live in this weak flesh, right? But the amazing thing is if we seek him with all our hearts, we will find him. We can gain clarity by growing closer to him, by seeking him more. So how do we cultivate this relationship in Christ? We just give him the word and we cry out to him and we get to know him better. Proverbs 2, 1 through 11 says, My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as silver and search for it as hidden treasure, then you will find, then you will understand. You will understand the fear of the Lord. For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless, and he guards the course of the just. He protects the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair, every good path. For wisdom will enter your heart, and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul, Discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you. So the one thing I promise to tell you, the one thing we need for clarity. And you guys, it's faith. It's faith in God. In, in, in investing in that relationship, in that, that love that he has for you. Um, it's believing. The one thing you can always be crystal clear on is that God's intentions for you are good. And when you have faith the size of a mustard seed, things can change. Mountains can move, right? Gosh, so when I broke free from a lot of this misunderstanding that I had and confusion, I just became so passionate about sharing who God sees us to be and how he equips us to actually do what he has called us to do. I'm like so passionate about this, you guys. Um, so I wrote this, this Bible study curriculum called Crown and Sword spiritual training for becoming a royal warrior and it's really meant to get um to get women to read the word and cultivate this relationship with him to cultivate it and to to know him and not his heart in context better to know him better and to experience in him and and really gain such confidence in who he is and who he created you created us to be so i made this this um bible study curriculum right but i found that there were a lot of these things that people struggled with 
the the things of like following through with the discipline of getting th through the whole book um, and and really applying themselves to it and so I created this um, a soul training which is their courses where I can come alongside and walk through the scriptures with you with with people that want to engage that want to to know God better um, and to walk out in the truth of the victory and really apply themselves to it. But it's just hard. It can be hard with the with life and circumstances. And so I created this course. Um, I created this course to equip, to equip everyone, to equip the women, to help understand context and God's heart behind it. Um, to strengthen the core values in the truth, in the full truth, strengthen those core values and to burn away the lies that infiltrate our thinking and our choices. So I took you through this whole training and all these things that you need to, you can address and identify to gain clarity, but I don't want to just leave it there. So I'm offering soul training for $5. Five dollars. <laughs> I don't want to just leave you with all this information. I want to be able to come alongside of you um, to really apply all of it. So five dollars a month for uh, this soul training membership, which gives you three training videos that are short and brief so that you can actually do it in um, in a, whatever time works for you. That's like 15 minutes a day. Um, so there's like three videos, there's a theme verse and a printout so that you can actually see it and apply it. There's a journaling so that you can actually like engage with the scripture and think about how it works mm, in your circumstances. Uh, and then, and that, yeah, you're, you're studying context, you're studying core values and diminishing the lies. So that's what... That's what Soul Training membership is all about. And there's a membership that, or a community that goes with it. We've got a Facebook community where I go on live and address everything too. So I just want to offer that to you. If you're interested in digging in more and really applying all of these things, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. It's so funny. I took a personality test this week. <laughs> it's like, I am an advocate. It says, I'm an advocate. You, it says, uh... You point people towards their potential and want them to live it out. I'm like, what? Don't know me. <laughs> so that's what I'm here to do. I just want to offer and equip you as best as I can. So that's, I'm going to close up now. We've been on for 45 minutes and I just hope that that really encourages you and you can walk away now feeling equipped. And if you want to engage more, there's the offer there for soul training. Um, I would love, I would love to come alongside of you even further to, to get the truth um, in something that you can do every day and live in the victory that God wants to give you in clarity and confidence. Okay. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for this time. We thank you for what you're doing in our world, the way you are uniting your church and revealing yourself. Father God, we pray that we would be able to have clarity in knowing what to do moving forward. Um, and we pray for the leaders of our country, for the leaders of our world. Um, Lord, we just give it all to you and we trust you. We trust that your intentions are good. We love you, Lord. I pray for each of the women here, um, here live and on the replay. I just pray that you would uh, give them clarity, that you would give them clarity. We love you, Lord. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, girls. I love you guys. God bless. Godspeed. I'll see you later.